In Excel, you can add shading to alternate rows to make a table easier to read. One way to do that quickly is by using a named table. So if you're using Excel 2010 or 2007, you can select a cell in a data range, go to the Insert tab, click Table and OK, and it will automatically create a table with a table style that has alternating shaded rows. If you don't want to insert a table, you can do the same thing with conditional formatting. So here's another sheet with the same data. I'm going to use the mod function in a conditional formatting formula, and we'll just see how that works on the worksheet before we put it in conditional formatting. So I'll type mod here, and the mod formula, I'll type equals mod open bracket and then we want to divide one number by another and mod will give us the remainder so I'd like to use the row number so I'll type the row function and then open and close brackets and I want to have two shaded rows and then one row with no fill color that gives me a total of three rows in each grouping so I'll type a three close the bracket and press enter. So when I divide this row number by three, I get a remainder of two. Copy that down so we can see that when we use the row number and divide by three, the possible remainders are zero, one, and two. We want to shade two of the rows, so we could shade any row where that mod would be zero or one and leave the twos with no fill color. So I'm gonna copy this formula and then we'll select these rows where we want the shading. I'm going to be deleting this column later. And on the Home tab, in Styles, click Conditional Formatting, New Rule. We're going to be using a formula, so we click there, and here's where we're going to enter the rule. I'll paste in my mod formula. So mod, the row number, and three. We want to check if that is less than two. And if it is, we're going to format those cells. Click Format, and I'll select this second gray shade. Click OK and OK. And you can see that anywhere there's a 2 here, it didn't shade. What 0 and 1 were shaded. And we can delete that. We can also make this more flexible. Instead of typing those numbers in the formula, we could put cells on the worksheet and then change those numbers if we want to change the banding sequence. So on this sheet, I've got the same formatting set up. And I'm going to set up a little table where I can enter the number of rows that I want. I want two with gray, one with no fill, and my total will just be a sum. Click the auto sum button and press enter. So I'm going to have three rows in each sequence. Now clicking any cell in this table, I'll go back to the conditional formatting and click manage rules. Here's the mod rule that we set up and I want to edit that rule. So now instead of this three, I want to use the total number of cells in the sequence. And instead of the two, I want to use the number of gray rows and click OK and OK. So everything still looks the same, but if I change the number of gray rows to a one, now I have one of each for a total of two in each sequence. Or I could put two no color rows so now I have one and two. So by putting the references on the worksheet, you have a more flexible conditional formatting rule that you can change without going back into the rule dialog box. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.